Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masaku and uh, welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a most requested video, things you should know before joining MD Anesthesia Residency. So today we have Dr. Neha who is a consultant in Anesthesia in our department and also lead of academics in our Hello. department. Hi. Welcome Neha to my channel. Thank you, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, subscribers have requested a lot recently. Okay. Uh, many of them have uh, finished the NEET exams mm -hmm. and are joining MD Anesthesia. So the request is that what should they know really before joining uh, MD Anesthesia? Okay. Like, uh, which were not told to them. And uh, there are no videos actually covering this topic. Even okay. I have searched. So I would like to start with uh, the first point. So logbook is the most important thing you need to maintain. Reason is uh, uh, most of the most of the guys we write down some uh, cases and we submit to the university just for the sake of completion of our course. But that is not right. What you need to do is methodically from beginning uh, you have to start writing your cases and the procedures that you are doing, the classes that you are presenting. Everything should be written in the logbook, which will help you when you are applying for some foreign university or uh, some super speciality interview when you are attending or some hospital when you are applying for job after MD. It will help a lot. So yeah. what do you think Neha? It's an absolutely very good point and one more important thing here is if you are doing some interesting case, make it a point to jot it down. Because many a times, uh, suppose when you are applying for your super speciality or to a foreign university, you are setting up for an interview, they might go through your logbook and they might catch hold of some interesting case that you have written in detail and that might just you know tilt uh, the things yeah. in your favour. So it's a good idea to just jot down any interesting case that you do. So you're saying that might be a deciding factor for exactly. your career. That could be. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why so not? sometimes small small things actually will change your career paths. Yeah. So that's about the love book. And next important point that you should know is most of the uh, MD first year students will be focusing only on the procedures. IV line insertion or arterial line insertion, center line I want to do. So that is not the most important thing you should know. According to me, uh, the most important thing uh, MD anesthesia first year person should learn is the mask ventilation because the mask ventilation is the one which saves lives so you need to learn that how to hold the mask how to grip the mask how to ventilate the patient after giving the anesthesia drugs right. and how to maintain oxygen saturation in the body is what you have to learn what do you uh, I think uh, it's absolutely correct mask ventilation hand mask ventilation is an art and I think you have to really master this art at whatever stage of uh, your residency or further experience you are at. Mask ventilation is the most important thing as an anesthesiologist or as an acute medicine specialist that you can you know, do or teach others or learn yourself. So master that art, master the insertion of supraglottic airway devices, eye gel which is a part of supraglottic airway devices because that can really save lives. Once you are confident with these things, then probably move on to your laryngoscopy and intubation and then furthermore different different things like fiber optic guided intubation, nasal intubations or uh, you know CMAP, video laryngoscope. But hand mask ventilation, like proper ventilation of the patient is absolutely necessary and important to learn. Perfect. No brainer. Yeah, super. So that's so the let, let's move on to the next thing. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing uh, that I feel that you should learn is the understanding the mechanism of action and the doses of emergency drugs. So um, there are certain emergency drugs that you need to know like uh, atropine, aphetine, adrenaline, phenylephrine, noradrenaline and uh, these are the commonly used drugs. There are some other drugs also like dopamine and so many other drugs. So you need to know the correct doses of and uh, how to dilute these drugs and the, even the dilution of fluids are also specific for each particular uh, drug. So you need to understand them first before jumping on to the anesthesia drugs. Right. What do you I, I agree completely. I think both of these should go in parallel. What usually happens in our first year is uh, the seniors and everyone, your you know residency seniors or your consultants or SRs, they would kind of insist that you know read your anesthetic drugs and they are right, absolutely right. You have to do that but simultaneously spare some time each day in reading about the emergency drugs that you use. The emergency drugs are to be used in an emergency and an emergency by definition doesn't give you much time to think or act. So if you are well versed with the use of your emergency drugs, at least the acute phase will be taken care of. Anesthesia drugs, yes, that is going to be your bread and butter. You need to be absolutely you know, thorough with those. 
but also simultaneously give equal importance to the usage of emergency drugs. We always keep emergency drugs loaded before we even touch the patient. So those drugs are there not just for the optics. You have to know when am I supposed to use those drugs, how am I supposed to use those drugs and what exactly is the dosage. So just be absolutely well versed with those emergency drugs. That's going to save your life and your patient's life. Super. I hope you understood the importance of understanding the emergency drugs. Let's move on to the next point. So, observing the seniors and your professors or anybody senior to you in doing any procedure or how they are actually approaching the patient, how they are talking to the patient. I think first you need to observe rather than directly jumping on the, onto the patient and doing a procedure or trying to learn something on the procedure. First, try to observe the uh, the fine skills that they're using and how they're actually doing the stuff and then after observing a certain number i don't, I don't uh, specifically uh, specifically tell this many number you're talking different for everyone it's different for everyone and everyone's uh, every procedure has a separate type of observer what do you think yeah it's absolutely true basically see anesthesia is an art it's a very fine art you have to really learn the nuances of uh, this branch so just observe initially no one is expecting you to do anything all they expect you to do is just, you know, don't do any blunders. So you just observe what your seniors are doing, how they are, you know, deciding upon a case which is to be taken for the day, how the senior is talking to the patient, how the senior is, you know, kind of putting the patient at ease. Because it's not just about the drugs. If sometimes you're talking can do half of your job. Right? So it can take the anxiety away. If the patients know what they are getting into, they will feel much more confident much more relaxed you know when they enter the OT. OT is a very you know different area for them. For us, I mean it's our day-to-day -day thing. We are well versed with the blue walls, you know, the modular OTs, but for them it's like probably the first time in their life and the last time in their life uh, they are entering such such a place. So just uh, concentrate on how your seniors are talking to the patient, how they are formulating a plan and how they are going ahead with any of their procedures, whether it is as simple as putting the IV cannula, putting an IV cannula, that also can be an art because you know you don't need multiple punctures and you need to find the vein first and distend the vein properly and then go for the kill basically and then it goes uh, so on and so forth. Yes. Observe, observe. That's it. I hope you guys understood the importance of observation. So let's move on to the next point. So next point is about thesis. So Very important. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you can take the lead and start with all So how to choose a thesis, uh, okay. uh, see most of them, see, including me when I did my MD, so I chose a thesis just to finish and get my degree, but now I feel I have done a mistake. <laughs> because uh, see the thesis topic, you have to select in such a way that it will go for a publication in the future. Yeah. That is how I feel you should select a topic. Rather than choosing some simple topic which somebody has done before and you're trying to repeat that, that doesn't make sense. You just put some little effort, try to uh, find a knowledge gap and try to fill in the gap and uh, uh, make sure that that gets published in future. Right. So this advice is from the you know the person who probably has published the most papers in our department. So I'll give you a practical advice uh, there. Thesis, yes, you you know uh, choose a topic which is interesting so that you know it can interest further more people when you are kind of done with your thesis, you have come up with something new or something different, not necessarily new. But at the same time, you have to finish those uh, topics or that thesis in the three year time frame or the two year time frame that you've been given. Uh, make sure the topic is kind of simple for you to do. It doesn't extend, you know, in the post-op or uh, too many hours into the post-op. Easiest thing or simplest thing to do is probably choose a topic which starts in your OR and finishes in your OR. That just makes your life much more easier because all the parameters you can kind of you know jot down there and then itself uh, there is no need of following up i mean you would generally follow your patients up but a prolonged follow-up is not required so it just helps you in the longer run and because you have an exam to clear as well yes thesis is an important aspect but clearing an exam in my sense would be you know would take the piece of cake here <laughs> so keep it think uh, you know, keep things simple so uh so a very good suggestion. So try to finish it within the you know, OT time frame. So what uh, books or what subjects to read when you start your anesthesia training? So I think this point you have to start. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
whenever you entered your anesthesia residency uh, the first thing all your seniors uh, are going to tell you okay start reading this book that book this is the textbook that is you know our go to book for anesthesia yes it's very important but uh, you know i have been associated with the academics ever since i have entered into my senior residency right to my junior consultant level to senior consultant level one thing is very important for you to understand cardiac physiology and respiratory physiology it is our bread and butter you have to be thorough with this physiology and i am not saying you just uh, pick up the most you know difficult book to understand in the universe no go back to your first year go back to your genomics physiology book i am not too in too much in favor of guyton because i believe uh, it has just wasted the pages like anything uh, genomics is a much simpler book to understand you guys might have already read it just revise revision is the key here and once you feel confident enough with genomics again with your cardiac and respiratory physiology then probably move over to the specific books which take care of anesthetic respiratory and cardiac physiology because then the physiology would be explained uh, in terms of our anesthetic management also so in that for example we have west respiratory physiology all those things and you can definitely read but always start with the basics get your basics right cardiac and respiratory physiology most important to understand then there will be obviously a list of books that you have to read over a period of time that is a separate topic yeah. altogether but get your physiology on point super so start with physiology and after that it you will take a direction once you start working and once your rota is met classes and you will take a different direction excellent so this is about what books to read and the last but not the least final point it's more uh, related to the point where we told observe from the senior something like that there is always a plan when your senior or assistant professor or associate professor is planning a particular case for anesthesia it's not about giving some proper of or giving mother relaxing to the patient it's more like a plan is there behind every anesthetic administration so try to understand that plan if you don't really understand because you're a first year person just uh, ask them so what is the plan why did i choose that plan so right. why feel that is important what do you think? it's absolutely true uh, and also one more thing as first years uh, it is absolutely normal to be disoriented for the first few months you are not going to understand everything <laughs> Uh, see anesthesia is a branch uh, i think during our internship it's a 10 day or 14 days posting mm-hmm. and what do we do in those 14 days we bunk bunk <laughs> <laughs> so that is i think a country wide phenomena i mean uh, it's okay everybody does it we start from zero <laughs> exactly so anesthesia is one branch where we literally start from zero it's absolutely okay to be disoriented for the first few months uh, take it slowly it's okay it's something which is new and it is an acute care uh, you know medicine so you need to be absolutely well versed with everything take your time so and when we say that you know observe your seniors and once you get a little bit of understanding of the subject start discussing the cases with your seniors uh you can always ask them okay so you have decided or ma'am you have decided upon uh, spinal anesthesia for this case uh was there any specific reason uh, could we have given general anesthesia without sounding or behaving too nosy understand everything and then you can ask these questions i don't think there is anyone who can you know um, kind of say okay why are you asking this thing or that thing do encourage questions and that's how you learn Uh, because uh, you know few years down the line you would definitely remember that moment in time when you were confused and you asked your senior that question and it was you know the doubts were cleared and then you had a proper plan in mind oh fine so this is the reason i decided upon spinal anesthesia and not general anesthesia or vice versa so unless you understand your subject and unless you understand what thought process you know goes on behind the scenes uh, you know you'll be a mediocre anesthetist and uh, we don't want to be that right we want to be good at whatever we do so yeah maybe they can enter this plan that lot book also exactly exactly uh, you know they can uh, if there is a case which is interesting enough where you know you would have given general anesthesia or you could have given regional and then you chose a certain type then you have to kind of justify it you can jot it down there why i chose general anesthesia over regional anesthesia in this particular case and that is fair enough as long as your patient is safe your thought process is clear and you are convinced everything works so if you write your log book like that if not for exam it will help you in your future when you go through your past uh, records then 
Yeah. Some some case actually will, will be helping you in managing a future case. Uh, things that you should know before joining the MD Anastasia. So congratulations all of you for taking up MD Anastasia as your career. It is seriously going to be a wonderful journey for you. And I can tell you one thing, there will be no day which is boring for you. Because every day will be exciting. So uh, there have been many studies done in uh, I think for healthcare quality and safety where they found out that an anesthesiologist's job is almost uh, equal to that of a pilot. Uh, when a pilot flies a plane, two most important aspects are a nice takeoff and a nice landing, right? In between, as we say, as we use the term autopilot, things may look boring, but it takes years and years of training to keep things boring. Anesthesia is exactly like that. Your induction is just like a takeoff, you want it to be smooth. Your extubation, your reversal has to be as smooth as you know landing a plane. In between, yes, things can be on autopilot. We have you know uh, the machinery there, we have the infrastructure there to take care of all those things. But uh, as an anesthesiologist, it takes years and years of, uh, of training to get into that autopilot mode. So yes, it's a very interesting branch. I have not regretted it. I'm sure Dr. Deeras does not regret it. It's very exciting. And all the best to you guys. Hope you do good. So. That's it for the day. As usual, Dr. Dheeraj Masapu logging off. Roger that. It's more like a pilot driving a... Uh, sorry, pilot driving the aeroplane. Pilot flying aeroplane? <laughs> cut, 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 cut. We'll cut this. Okay. So, it's more like a pilot flying an aeroplane. So, uh, we don't know when things will go wrong. So, that, all, that always keeps the anesthetist on the toes. And uh, it will be exciting throughout your journey. We don't say, we, we don't know that things will go wrong. Okay, uh, it's it. like, uh, it's a high intensity job. When the pilot is flying, so yeah. although... In the stop field, there, uh, you continue some. Ah, uh, okay. Uh. There's a study also, okay, okay fine. Anesthesia, shall I start? Ah, uh, you start. Okay. 